if there is something for you to wear to do a thing, you will feel like that thing wants you to do it. Whether that be, you know, being a doctor, being a rugby player, being an astronaut, if there's something for you to wear to do something, then you are going to feel like that community has a space for you and holds a space for you. Body positivity for me and for me during my, my childhood was so important to, to go from the person where I was picked last on the school teams to then being celebrated for my assets of being strong and big and a go-to person in the team. It just changed my, my whole self-esteem. The greatest thing about rugby is from whether you're a, a loose head prop or a full back, you're appreciated for your size or your strength or your speed. There's so many different things and it's a game for all and that's, that's the beauty of the game. My advice would be to anyone that takes up the game, there is a position for you and to, to enjoy it and celebrate your body because you've got to look after yourself and, and enjoy what you do. I thought it was really important that No Woman No Try represented a totally different type of role model that you don't tend to see in society. I think girls especially have one route and it is somebody with a certain type of body shape and whereas in rugby it's so important for every type of person, every type of body uh, to exist on the, on the field. So for me No Woman No Try had to represent that and that's what I think you now see is a totally different type of woman succeeding in sport and women and girls can grow up seeing t different types of role models um, on the big screen. I think that one of, the, one of the huge advantages that rugby has as a sport is the fact that it does require different body types to play it um, and that's what's going to make it not only super marketable for literally anybody in the entire world but it's what makes it have that, that really empowering, really special feeling for everybody who plays it. You know, everybody who, everybody who walks into rugby, whether they're big, small, tall, fast, slow, whatever, a lot of those people still have the same feeling of like this is a space for me and that is not an experience that other sports are able to offer in the same way. So I think that body positivity is, I don't think you could have rugby without body positivity or without inclusivity because the way that the sport is, is designed and the way that um, it includes different physicalities and different types of, of athletes lends itself to being a really, really good um, kind of like microcosm of, of wider society and it's it's magic, it's why, it's why people get so, I think, kind of waxed poetic about rugby and, and, and the feeling you get playing it, because it's, it's different, it's just different. Rugby came about because I got really, really tired of wearing men's kit, and I decided to fix the problem myself. It's massively important to have the, the women's fit kit. That's something that we've only just sort of gone into the realms of getting the women's kit. Um, whether it be football or rugby or many other sports, we need to take that into account. The same as rugby boots, you know, it's always been men's rugby boots, actually women's feet are generally different. It's great to have the, the opportunity to, to have both and, and the same if you're a male and you have maybe slightly slender feet and you might go for a women's fit, which doesn't matter, you, you pick for what's appropriate for you and to make you the most comfortable to play your best. Having Steph involved in No Woman No Try is a no-brainer. She is an inspiration to people, the way that she plays on the pitch, the way she handles herself off the pitch. Rugette doesn't just represent a brand of women's rugby, but it also represents a woman who found a solution to a problem. She didn't wait for somebody else to come up with a women's fit kit. She went and did it herself. Steph went out and measured people at sevens tournaments until she understood exactly the sizes of clothing she needed to service the women's rugby. And I think if girls can learn from her to go and find solutions to their own problems, uh, then that's just the best thing that can come out of the film. It has brought the brand in front of a lot of people who were rugby fans who didn't know about it. It's also brought the brand in front of people who didn't know they were rugby fans, but do understand that, that feeling of not having a seat at the table. If there is something for you to wear to do a thing, you will feel like that thing wants you to do it. Whether that be, you know, <laughs> being a doctor, being a rugby player, being an astronaut, if there's something for you to wear to do something, then you are going to feel like that community has a space for you and holds a space for you. And if there isn't something made for you to participate in it, you won't feel like it wants you there. Just plain and simple. When the Canterbury Irish kit launch came out, 
and shot the pictures, for me, in my head, I'm just like, oh, classic. And it doesn't come as a surprise. They launched the kit with male players, but to represent the female kit, they used models. And that really, for all women in the game, represented everything that we faced. And it was very much a, oh, like a, a, another campaign that's overlooked us as women players. It may not have been a massive decision they made. In fact, I know it wasn't. It's just that lack of thought and lack of realising that it's probably not a good idea. And that could come down to who's making those decisions, and that's a whole different conversation as to who's in the, those board meetings, who's got the power to make those decisions. It was good to Canterbury to then be big enough and brave enough to come out and apologise because they could have done what so many companies do and pretend that it, it's not a thing and downplay it, but they publicly apologised and then moved forward from that, come out with the positive statements as to how they're going to change the game and how important brands are to rugby. They've taken the hit in that moment in time, but actually there's a lot of people who would have sat back and had a look at themselves and had a look at what people they're using to promote their products, like how many women's products they have available even on their page. And now it's about looking forward and looking for change. Back in 2003, we were sponsored by Swiss Life and the shirts we had was like pulling on a sleeping bag made out of the thickest, heaviest, cloth that you'd ever worn it was kind of it, it weighed so much and the fit you, it was just like wearing a massive flannel so you just you looked terrible it didn't it wasn't in any way athletic so we went from that to, to then having the the men's fit kit throughout my career up until right at the end where we we did have the women's fit kit and and the difference that made from for me personally I, I was a little bit conscious of myself and I, I didn't want to you know I wasn't one of the skinny backs that wanted to show off a six-pack I was you know one of the bigger forwards that wanted to, to cover up the fact I had a little bit of a belly so I'd end up having wearing a, a 2XL or a 3XL because I didn't want to have really really tight stomach and then tight on the shoulders so with the men's fit it was really baggy on the shoulders and then um, and then really tight on the stomach so I'd go up those extra sizes so I didn't feel and comfortable and, that, and that's a huge thing to take into account playing an international you want to be comfortable you don't want to be thinking oh does my belly look big in this or I've got to pull it down or that kind of thing. Rugby by nature of, of the different positions we have on the field requires different body types and I think that that's what makes rugby so special and, and feels so empowering for so many different people.